everybody. Glad to see y'all here this evening. Welcome to our folks that are watching it via live stream. You all will stand and turn to hymn number 721. 721, singing all three verses of Jesus Never Fails. Across the area 
and it was black as night. They couldn't see. They were disoriented. And the people, the soldiers were getting out of the tanks, going to the Ukraine people, asking for food and directions of how to get out of there. Now, if that isn't our Lord at work, what is it? The Lord is working through this time of turmoil in the Ukraine. Let's keep praying for our, our, our folks over there. Our brothers and sisters that are worshiping the Lord while all of this travesty is going on. Remember our teachers here in Aiken County and all around the state of South Carolina. Uh, remember our church, our pulpit committee. I was fixing to say our preacher stealing committee. Uh, that's what we used to call them when I was little. Um, but they'll find and be led to the right man, the one that the Lord wants to have here. Just direct them. Uh, my buddy Scott Dabney, put him on your prayer list, folks. Uh, he's having some more other health issues that have just developed here recently. Any other prayer requests or prayer concerns? If not, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this time to come to your house to worship you, to study your word, to come and intercede on the behalf of others and bring their names and their situations to your throne. Father, we lift up our brothers and sisters in the Ukraine as they are being bombarded by Russian troops. Your children there are standing strong. They're worshiping you. They're praying constantly. Praying without ceasing as you tell us in your word. Father, all these folks we have on our list tonight, we lift them up. The ones that are having tests, the ones that are sick, the ones that have recovered from illnesses, we give you praise. And Father, as I deliver the message tonight, hide me behind the cross of Calvary. Let me decrease so you can increase. That your word is being spoken, and at least one will hear it tonight. Father, I love you, and I know the folks that are here with you, with us, love you also. And we praise you for everything you've done in our lives and will continue to do in our lives. For us in the holy and powerful name of your Son, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Folks, if you will, turn to Luke chapter 16, verse 19 through 31. Before I get started, I'm going to ask a question. Do you know where you're going to be when you get to where you're going? Think about that because I'm going to ask that question again a little bit later on. Do you know where you're going to be when you get to where you're going? This passage deals with the rich man and Lazarus. And I've entitled it, Seven Things in Hell that every church needs. And I will subtitle it tonight that seven things in hell that this nation needs. I know it sounds kind of odd. What does a church need that's in hell? And you'll see as I progress through this tonight and, and we look at the scriptures. Let's look at the word right here. Chapter 16 of Luke, verse starting with verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and, fire, and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores 
and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. He, he cried out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou had thy, in thy lifetime received thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a, gulf, a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, and neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers that, may, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto them, unto him, If they hear not Moses and, Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. The first thing that every church needs that's in hell is a consciousness of a burning hell. We see where the rich man is saying that he is tormented in the flame. We need to be conscious of the fact that our loved ones who die without Christ, they would go to a burning hell. And that place is real. It is real. No matter how much we attend church, no matter how much we give to all our missions efforts, no matter how good we are, that's not going to keep us and our loved ones from a burning hell. Unless we have a saving knowledge and covered in the shed blood of Jesus Christ, that's the only way we will go to heaven. No preacher, no priest, no potentate, no president, no Republican Party, no Democrat Party, no Independent Party, no Green Party, anything other than the shed blood of Jesus Christ will get us into heaven. Jesus is not just one way to heaven. He is the way to heaven. We also must have a compassion that will bring tears. This man is in torment in hell. He can't even cry. And he's still begging and pleading with Father Abraham to send Lazarus to his brothers. He's got a compassion for his family that's still alive. What's wrong, church? Do we have a compassion for the lost of this community? Do we have a compassion for the lost loved ones in our family? Before revival comes to our churches, we're going to have to revive the Amen Corner. And that's not the Amen Corner at the Augusta National either. It's the Amen Corner that's a front pew or a side pew or any pew in the church that the church members, the brothers and sisters and the senior saints get up and say, Amen, brother. Preach it, brother. we got to have the Amen Corner revived. I'm talking about all of our pews and altars at the church. Our altars need to be filled Sunday after Sunday with tears of genuine concern of our lost loved ones in the lost community and the lost situation and state of this of this 
United States and the world. We've got to be genuine. Don't fake it. Have a real burden on your heart every time you mention that lost family member in prayer or that lost co-worker in prayer. We also have to have a confession that will bring mercy. Here's a man who waited too long to cry out for mercy. Folks, if you leave this world and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's too late. There's no second chances after you've gone. Once you're dead, it's over. Even though a child of God will never go to hell, they can suffer untold misery being outside of God's will. Let's turn to 1 John chapter 1, verse 7 through 10. 1 John chapter 7, chapter 1, verses 7 through 10. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us, of, cleanses us from all sin. And we say, if, if we say we have no sin, we have deceived ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Folks, we sin daily. When we wake up to the time we go to bed, we sin daily. Not intentionally, but we do sin. That's why we must die to self daily, as the Apostle Paul did. We must have a commitment or a confession correction, a commitment to the fire. You've got to be committed to the fire. Just as much as this rich man was committed to the fires of hell, we as believers should be committed to the fire of God. We must get out and let the fire of Jesus Christ burn within us so that everybody in this community says, I want what they got. We've got to let this lost community see the Lord Jesus Christ in us. In many lives, the fires of God are not aglow. They're not burning. Like I played the song earlier before service, give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning, burning, burning. Folks, we can ask for all the oil in our lamps, but if we don't trim them, and if we don't get in the Word daily and stay on fire for God, we're not going to burn. We've got to stop playing church, coming to church Sunday morning and evening and on Wednesday evening for a spiritual fill-up. Ain't going to cut it. We need to go back and knock on the doors. Of the lost and hell bound people in this community. As we're told in the great commission. In Matthew chapter 28 verses 18 through 20. We also must have a channel of communication with our father. If that channel which is prayer is broken. We've got to have that up and down communication from us to God before we can have the outward pouring of communication to the lost of this world and our families. We need to 
need to stay on speaking terms with God. We can't get like some family members. And I can attest to this. They don't speak to each other for years until there's a funeral in the family. Or there's a wedding. Or there's a baby born. Don't say a word to them. Communication lines are broken. We can't let our communications between God and Father and us be broken. The only time some folks pray is when they're in trouble. Oh Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm in so much problems. I've got so much debt. I, I don't know what to do. I'm sick. I don't know what to do. I've been to the doctor. They don't know what to give me. Folks, we need to pray when we're in trouble, when we're sick. But we also need to give thanks when we're having the good times. Don't forget about God when you're having a great day or your health is fine. Don't, don't forget about God. Talk to Him daily. We don't need to use God as a spare tire. Only pull him out when we need him. All of us can be prayer warriors. We've got to have a concern that only God's plan will save folks from a burning hell. If a man like this rich man in this passage of scripture that we just read has that concern about his brothers back home on earth after he's dead and gone and he's in torment, why can't we have that concern while we're alive today? about the ones we love and we care about and about our leaders and about our nation. Folks, we need to have that concern. No matter how big or small the person is, no matter what their social, economic status is. We need to have that concern for their soul. We need to have a concern that they will turn from their wicked ways and see the error of their way. I was listening to Dr. Phil Kidd last night before I went to bed. He's a pastor at Emmaus Church in Tennessee. Awesome, awesome pastor. I mean, he is a fireball. He said, he, he used the analogy of, of the president of Ukraine and our president. He said uh, President Biden called and spoke with the president of the Ukraine and said, I'll get you out of the country so you can remain alive. President of Ukraine says, I don't want a ride. I want supplies. I want ammunition. I want guns. I don't want a ride out of here. Now that's the kind of president I like. One that's got the backbone to stand up and stand with his people. When his people are standing in front of trucks and, and tanks with no weapons and they're just holding up their hands in front of these vehicles, stopping them. And these troops, they don't know why they're in the Ukraine. They're running out of fuel. They're running out of food. They don't know what's going on. But the people 
people of Ukraine know that there is a God that is standing with them. He has a band, an army of angels with him that is standing with the people of Ukraine against this evil. We, the church, have that same band of angels that we can call upon. We call on the name of Jesus Christ and ask for His help. He can send us the armies of angels to help us with our situations. He can touch that soul of that lost loved one, that lost neighbor, that lost co-worker. We have to have that concern that God's plan will save. And God has a plan for us he has a plan for the Ukraine. He has a plan for everything that's going on. And we'll understand it by and by. And finally, we've got to have, know that consent that only God's plan will save. We've got to know and consent that God's plan will save. Many people have set up their own plan to be saved. Some folks trust in baptism, church memberships, joining some church group, good works, many other things to be saved. But folks, we all know that we must be saved and we must go to Jesus Christ and confess of our sins and accept Him as our Lord and Savior and be shed, covered in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. John chapter 14 verse 6 And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And Jesus is speaking here and he's telling this to Thomas. Verse 7. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. Then there's Acts 4, 14, and Romans 6, 23. And 1 John, or John, chapter 1, verses 12 through 13. And there's so many others that we can name and go through tonight. I may have stepped on some toes this evening. I don't apologize for the Word. God's Word is the truth. This is the truth. Until we, as what people in the call, in the community call the church people, get out of these four walls and these pews and get into the community and tell the lost in this community of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're as guilty as they are. We are. We're as guilty as they are. We need more on fire Christians and preachers that just don't tell of His love and that the love that God has for us, but also the reality of a burning hell. Folks, I love y'all. Our folks on, that are viewing us from on live stream, folks, I love y'all. God loves you. And if you die and go to a place called hell, it's not because Jesus rejected you. It's because you rejected Jesus. That separation from 
Jesus and the heavenly host has got to be one of the most miserable things that could happen to a person. That place called hell has got to be very miserable because it's an unquenchable fire. There's no water to quench your thirst. There's gnashing of teeth and, and, and screaming because of the worms and the fire and all that attacking your bodies of the persons that are in hell. We need more preachers than instead of tickling the ears, instead of doing theology and breaking down things. We need more preachers to get down on their knees and pray and shed a tear over a church member that's lost or somebody that's in the community that is lost. We need a, a, a preacher. We need preachers that get out there and put it to the task. Put the church to the task, folks. In closing, remember what I told you. Do you know where you're going to be when you get to where you're going? Do you really know where you're going to be? At the end of the day, where are you going to be when you get to where you're going? Is your call to go to heaven founded and foundation is sure? Tonight, there's probably somebody online that's looking at us tonight that might not know where they're going to be when they get to where they're going. You can check out our website, Former Memorial Baptist Church. Look us up online and request a prayer that we pray for you. Or go to our Facebook page and send us a message. This church is the people. This building is just a place we worship at. Let's don't let there be a Lazarus at our door. And a rich man inside these four walls that won't even give him the crumbs from his table. These altars need to be stained with tears of concern. And love for those that have not got a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank y'all folks. I love y'all. And let's look forward to the rest of this week until we come back again into this house to worship. And remember, we've got to have these concerns and these consents and these realizations the consciousness, the compassion, the confessions, the commitments, the communication. We must have all that. Because that's what's in hell that every church needs. And also that our nation needs tonight. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to the cross on Calvary to shed his blood for us. Father, he rose up on out of the grave on the third day, defeating the powers of death, hell, and the grave. If there's just one person,
person that doesn't know you that's watching this via live stream or will watch this down the line sometime on other social media outlets or our webpage. Father, just touch their hearts. Let us hear it for them. Be that guiding light that we can reach out and touch somebody and show them the way to a saving knowledge of you and salvation. Give us all traveling mercies to our respective homes as we leave here tonight. For us in the holy and powerful name of your Son, Jesus, I pray. Amen.